Hello everyone, welcome back to Demet channel for trending political stories and economic related issues and anything else that's just trending in Zambia. Make sure you follow me for all those updates and uh, if you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe and you can also check out my channel profile and uh, choose uh, videos from the playlist that best suit your interests. With that said, let's jump right into it. Dale, yesterday, <laughs> Dale, yesterday, uh, Miles Sampa, and you know who Miles is. Miles is the faction leader. He's the leader of the faction of the PF. As, as many of you know, the, the, the Notorious Patriotic Front has three separate, distinct, unique factions. The first one, of course, is led by Miles Sampa. It's called the NPF, the New Patriotic Front. The second faction, second faction is led by the former and sixth president, Edgar Chagualungu. It's also called the NPF, but it's called the Notorious Patriotic Front. And then the third um, uh, faction is led by Chavinga. And now we don't even know where the hell he is, okay, in terms of, you know, stance. But it, it'll map itself out, okay. My point is there are three factions. Now, the leader of the first faction, which is uh, legally recognized by the registrar of, 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 what is it? Is it the registrar of communities? We are not politicians, so we don't know these things. It, it, who's, what's the name of the body that recognizes political parties? The registrar of something. Is it the registrar of political parties or the registrar of societies? The registrar of, what is it? Tell me in the comments. Somebody's going to Mwinga. Could you tell me what is that name of that, that entity that registers political parties? What is it called? The registrar of something. The registrar of, of communities. Okay, let's let's go with that. The registrar of 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 whatever that is, societies. There you go. It's the registrar of they legally recognize Miles Sampa's faction. So technically speaking, the person that's going to appear for all intent and purposes, all things being equal, the person that will technically appear uh, on the ballot. That's if nothing changes between now and 2026, is Miles Wadiasampa in charge of the new Patriotic Front. But in terms of grassroots support, uh, Miles Sampa does not have the grassroots support of the NPF. He doesn't. If he decides to go and hold a rally in Kitwe, if he comes here to Kitwe to hold a rally, I would count the number of people on two fingers that would show up at that rally. I would. And that's just being realistic. I'm not trying to be hateful. I'm not trying to be spiteful. I'm just telling you the truth. If, if Miles went to Kutwapia and he decided to hold a rally, Kutwapia, I can count on two fingers how many people would show up. Okay, so the dilemma, the dichotomy is that Miles has the legal, the legal legitimacy in terms of recognition, but he does not have the grassroots support of the party. Therein lies the conundrum of the NPF. It's a mess. Okay. So my, my point then is, um, you've got Miles who, who's running this political party, who does not have the grassroots support, who recently expelled nine, I mean, count them, nine colossal members of the NPF. He literally booted them out. That's nine constituencies. That's nine constituents. That's nine, nine. You know, it's it's like it's like it's like the Titanic hitting nine huge icebergs. It's bad enough if the Titanic hits one, because you know history tells us that it was one iceberg, one gigantic, colossal, gargantuan iceberg that brought down that ship, the Titanic. In Miles' case, nine huge, significant, colossal, gargantuan icebergs, and then those icebergs are going to strike the ship. What's, what do you think is going to happen to the ship? It's it's going to sink. That's what's going to happen. Okay. So so you know aside from all of that, Miles has a has a financial issue to contend with, and let's not be uh, sheepish about it. Let's not be bashful about it. Uh, politics, running political parties for the purpose of putting your name forward for the presidency requires a huge amount of money. I'll never forget years ago, and I've told you this story, I've told you this story many times. My father was a consummate politician. Um, and I used to love listening to him talk about politics. You know, my father belonged to the, the, the political party UNIP. 
in the days of UNIP, the party and its government. <laughs> in those days. And I remember once him and I were having lunch. This was many years ago. It might have been 30 years ago. Maybe 35 years ago, you know. And I, I sort of turned to him and I said, Dad, um, how much does it cost to run a nationwide presidential campaign? How, how, much, how, much, how much do you think that costs? And he said, well, in terms of U.S. dollars, it, it'll cost you about $10 million. If you want to run a fully fledged, all pistons firing, a, 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 a finely tuned political engine that will reach the entire country, every ward, every district, every province, every nook and cranny of this nation, it'll cost you $10 million. Um, I can tell you, Miles does not have $10 million. Okay, he simply doesn't have that. And most of these political parties that tout themselves as presidential aspirants, they neither have the financial muscle or the technical know-how to run a fully-fledged presidential nationwide campaign. But uh, this is not tiptoeing through the tulips. Okay, this is not sunshine and rainbows. Okay, it's, it's serious business. And so everything that Miles is doing now, I think is, is it's really tantamount to wading in the water. You know, wading, not, not to pembela. Not waiting, wading. You know what wading means? W-A-D-I-N-G, wading. Wading means you're sitting at the side of the pool, you're, both your legs are in the pool, and you're doing this. You're not swimming, you're not going anywhere, you're, you're just sort of sitting there under the sun, and you're not moving from one point to you're just wading in the water. That's what most of these presidential candidates are doing. They're just, they're just waffling, just fooling around, you know, just shooting the breeze no what's going on are we what are we doing today oh, okay i'm just sitting here sitting pretty i'm just gonna wait and nothing that that's the issue so anyway and, and and you know i was for a time there was a time i was sort of um you know miles and i were sort of friends and we used to sort of hang out a little bit and the one thing i noticed about miles is that he is the most impulsive person i've ever met i mean he's the king of impulse the guy is an idea a minute. You know what that means? It means whatever pops into his head, he doesn't filter it, he just does it. And there's, there's, some, there's some good quality to that. You know, I think that you know, along the line, there, there are people that, um, I think, you know, that's a good quality. Sometimes when you shoot from the hip, you don't filter, you sort of act immediately. But, but then I think that there's certain things that you don't have to do that. You don't have to always be impulsive. Miles is the most impulsive person I have ever met. The guy's an idea minute, literally. And, and uh, no consultation, just we're going in this direction and that's what we're doing. Okay, and, and God forbid that you say to him, uh, maybe there's a different way, way, maybe there's a different route. How about we sit down and talk about it? Oh no, honey, Miles is gonna do what he's gonna do. Okay, so anyway, um, and, and you know, him and I were sort of close, and I saw that quality about him, you know. And uh, so yesterday, he sends out, of course, I'm not in, in the city of Lusaka, my hometown. I'm here in Kitwe. So my PA calls me, and she says, oh, you got a letter from Miles, a letter of demand from Miles. You guys know the story. You know, there was something posted on, on social media about Miles Sampa and all that stuff. So he attributed that to me. And, and the truth is, uh, if this thing does go to court, you're going to be shocked. You really are. It's actually, no. Let me change that. You're not going to be shocked because this is the nature of Miles. Everything that's going to come out in that court case, if indeed we go to court, and that's the reason why, that's the reason I've said Miles is impulsive. He can send a demand letter. Three months from now, he's, he's going to act like it didn't happen. He's just going to, what, I sent you a letter? I did? Did I do that? Did I, did I do that? I did? I don't remember saying that, you know? I don't remember. I'll be shocked if this thing goes to court. If it does, there's always legal aid, okay? Because God knows I don't have a treasure trove of cash to waste. M neither does Miles, let's be clear, okay? <laughs> Both Miles and I do not have the money to waste on lawyers, okay? Miles is tapped. I'm tapped, okay? If we do go to court, honey, legal aid, honey, legal aid. That's the reason legal aid exists, okay? We're not spending many money on big high profile lawyers. We've been down that road before. We're not going to do it again. Legal aid. All right. So, um, 
and, and here's the thing. Uh, th there's a lot to be learned from there. And of course, I, we're going to wait until that happens. But as, as of today, a demand letter doesn't mean anything. I, I hope you know that. A demand letter is not a summons. Okay? Because some of you were writing, Oh, my God, you have been summoned to court. No. That was a demand letter from some lawyer that he got. I don't know who the hell that is. Okay? And basically the letter simply says, look, allegedly you said this, either you retract, you apologize, blah 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 blah, or we go to court. Well, honey, circle the wagons on that. You can jump through this. If it does go to court, let's let the chips fall where they may. All right. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, secondly, I want to talk to you about Rafael Hijaka Nakachinda. He was on Emmanuel Mwamba's podcast. And incidentally, I was very pleased to, to see Kawana confront by Emmanuel Mwamba about the propaganda that Mwamba peddles. Remember, they were at the airport. They were about to receive Vachishimba Kambuili. And incidentally, let's pray. Let's hold Vachishimba Kambuili and his family up in prayer. That was a very tragic event. It, it, I tell you, you know, last night when we were coming from the function that we were covering uh, for P1, I was sitting in a car with a few people and, and we were just talking about this tragedy of Bakambuini. This apparently, this was the fourth accident that he's been in. Statistically, statistically, it, it's, it's mind boggling that you would have the same person that is involved in car accident after car accident. It is tragic. It really is. It's tragic. So our prayers, our hearts, go out to Akambuili and his family. It's a very, very difficult and tragic time. But um, we were talking in the car and we were talking about how Bakawana confronted Emmanuel Mwamba at the airport as they were waiting to receive Bakambuili. As you know, Bakambuili has been sent to Mina Soko uh, for specialist treatment. And um, we thank God for that. And Bamwamba, true to his nature, you know, live on Facebook. And I loved Kawana's composure. <laughs> Kawana just stood there and just waited for Mwamba to finish. Uh, Mwamba was saying, no, if you don't have to be but you have to be to be shocked, you know, you have to be shocked, you have to be shocked, you And Kawana says, you're lying. Nothing of the sort has happened. You're here. Nothing of the sort has happened. You are here. And um, so, uh, um, Rafael Hijaka Nakachinda was on Emmanuel Mwamba's uh, podcast. And Rafael, I tell you, you know, he is the guy, he's the type of guy, when I watch him speak, it just shocks me. Because he is in no moral position to talk about anything that he talks about. And I keep repeating this, and as, and as long as he keeps spewing this nonsense, as long as he keeps vomiting this foolishness, as long as he keeps regurgitating this idiocy, we will retort. We will. I mean, Raphael says, no, uh, uh, this, uh, this issue with the nervous, uh, if there's one person who I was close to, is nervous. And uh, even though nervous claims that he's the one who introduced me to politics, I was in politics long before nervous. Guys, the bottom line is that ECL, <clears throat> Sixth and former president Edgar Chagualungo sent Rafael Nakachinda into the MMD to penetrate the power structure of that party with the sole purpose of destroying it and imploding it from within. That is the truth. So I'm baffled, nay, I'm amazed, I am nonplussed when I see and hear Nakachinda talk about no uh, these people when he himself did the very same thing that he's complaining about <laughs> and, and 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 i will tell you this i'm not a prophet i've never claimed to be okay that's not my office but i will tell you the writing is on the wall nakachinda where he sits he knows the jig is up where he sits he knows the curtain call, this is the final curtain call, as Michael Jackson used to say. This is it. This is it. He knows it. He is in no moral position to demand anything and to claim anything. He and his homeboys 
and his posse are all at, an, at a disadvantage. They are no longer in power. And, and they lose sight of that. You know, they are self-delusional. These are a bunch of crooks that are so far removed from reality that they forget where they are. They are as vulnerable as a rabbit with, with a sky full of hungry vultures that will at any moment swoop down and vanquish them. You must understand that. You really must understand that. So I, I don't, I have no kind words for Rafael Nakachinda. He took Never Swamba through hell. And, and, and let me tell you, there's nothing more demonic than a man who claims to be a Christian, but acts like the devil. Woo! That's heavy there. There is nothing in the world more sinister, more diabolical, more detrimental than a person that has, has the facade of a Christian, when you unveil them, you are staring into the eyes of Lucifer himself. Lucifer. That's Nakachinda. And, and I can't stand to watch him. It turns, churns my stomach to watch him speak. It, it literally, it makes me physically ill, is what it is. You know, so... Uh, I, I, I shudder to think what's going to happen to him because he forgets that he's no longer, he, he's not, he thinks he's a bee's knees, is what it is. He thinks he's riding high on the saddle, is what it is. But the truth is, he's as vulnerable as a single rabbit in an open field with a sky full of hungry vultures that are waiting any moment to descend and snatch him. Before long, he's going to be a rumor. We're going to, they're going to put a line through his name instead of under it. You watch, see what I tell you. All right. What is the last point? I said three things. Didn't I say three things? What was the last thing I'm talking about? Tell me in the comments. And uh, I'm, I need to go downstairs here in a moment. I'm charging my batteries and stuff. What, what was the last thing I, I was supposed to talk about? Please tell me in the comments. Uh, I forget. I mean, I could refer to my phone, but why would I do that when I have you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's right. Uh, the the media pool, P1 Media. Um, I thank you. Who was that? Who said that? Stacy. Hey, Stacy Beamer. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Um, I, I get amused. I do. I get amused when I hear people say, "Oh, so you are enjoying." You know, when I take footage of me going to the airport and I document these trips, I document the trips from the beginning to the end. Beginning, you know, because, you know, every story has three components. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So I, I try to do that, okay? Um, I get so amused when people say to me, Oh, so, so you're the one enjoying. Eh? Mueva. Eh? Who's paying for those trips that you're going on? Let me explain something to you, Dwanzies, you Neanderthals. Let, let's begin, let's go back to 2021. Because, you know, I think that in order to understand where we are, we have to, first of all, appreciate where we've come from. Do you understand that? Okay. Remember, prior to the 2021 elections, Hagain de Hichilema was basically labeled and defined as the Facebook president. No, you are just uh, on Facebook, Hagain de. Yeah. You are up the chip of Facebook, you anyway. And I remember there was a lady, please tell me in the comments, there was some woman, she bet 5,000 kwacha to some, with some guy, I forget who it was. She said, I'll give you five pin if Hagainde wins. Kabi Hagainde, wa pa Facebook, chabi. Ba mu ishi wa fe pa fe, pa Facebook. Ba mu ishi wa fe pa i, pa internet. This ifa tu wa pa ground. Do you remember that? Do you remember that lady who said that? Tell me in the comments below, if you could tell me, please. Uh... Basically, HH was relegated and sort of confined to this definition of being a Facebook president. That he was concentrating on the Facebook when there are others, eh? real, consummate, authentic politicians who were on the ground and who were making tangible connections with the electorate. Why is he? Hakainde is just on Facebook. Well, <laughs> come to find out, Facebook, the internet, social media played a vital role in electing 
Hakainde Ichimema. You must understand that. I want that to sink in for a moment. I want that to sink in. Somebody says, what are you wearing? What's wrong with what I'm wearing? So now, Rufianya, this is wrong. I shouldn't wear this. What, what, would you, what would you have me do? You don't want me to wear this? Do you want me to take it off? This is not, you don't like this? No? You remember that? He's just a physical president. Well, <laughs> uh, social media was so powerful that the PF attempted to sabotage social media. And Zambians by that time were clued in VPN. You remember that? I'll never forget it. I'm standing in line. I voted at Evelyn Hone College. Uh, the, 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 the election prior to 2021, I voted on Katondo Street at the Lusaka City Council Public Library. But in 2021, I voted at Evelyn Hone College. Yes, it was Evelyn, Evelyn Hone College, yeah. Standing in line, <laughs> and, and a bunch of young people in front of me, and they were on their phones. You know, they were doing one of this, one of these. And then one of them started yelling, Eh, hey, hey, internet device, Salah. Hey, hey. Another person yells, Eh, hey, I never understood that. They've closed the internet. Very quickly, these chaps, these young boys, young, young boys and girls, I like Chaba, this generation, they were jacked up. Jacked up. But they took a VPN, they bypassed the system of Zikta. I don't know if you can access it. access. Why? Because ECL's team realized too late. Ah, ah. If it were that that Facebook was useless, can she has a, a direct bearing and a direct impact on these elections? So let us circumvent. Let us block these young people from accessing the internet so that we can have an advantage. PF themselves were asked, do you know anything? Given Lubinda was asked in the presence of Davis Mwila, what has happened to the internet? We don't know. That was given in as the response. I'm not aware. I'm not aware of the of disruption of the internet. Why? Because they knew the impact of social media. So now, fast forward. I said all that to say this. Fast forward to today. We now have a head of state who recognizes. In fact, he recognized it then. He knows the power of social media. So he has decided to incorporate social media platforms to disseminate the information surrounding his activities as the head of state. And there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, I'm not suggesting that SML TV is the only social media platform. There are many. There are many of us here. Many. There's a Kalimba, there's Mwebantu, there's a, all these chaps are here. Why? Because the president understands that it's no longer about traditional media. It's no longer about just ZNBC or your own. The president has a very uh, um, uh, uh, popular uh, Facebook page. More than 1.4 million followers on his page. But P1 knows that it's not just about his page. It's not just about traditional uh, media, which is ZNBC or Zanis. He recognizes now that incorporate social media platforms so that we can disseminate the information more quickly and expeditiously. So what do we do? Incorporate these platforms. Ask them to join us at a stipend, of course. But let me be honest with you. <laughs> when you say things like, fish to And to all of us, we just get a stipend. It's a stipend. You know, where I'm staying here, it's, it's a stipend. For you to think that Ubala Pelama 50 million, 50 million, it's just a stipend. And what we're doing, I wish you knew. I get so amused when you say you are what are we enjoying? Pantu, let me tell you, for example, let me just point out ZNBC and Zanis. When it comes to inch to cover the president, but I'm a guy's media. Hmm. But guys, they wake up early when they go to site where the president is going to be speaking or conducting an event. Those guys have to stand there for four, five, six hours. They can't leave, they can't go off and vlog the way I do. Those chaps work extremely hard, and by the end of the day, that this thing we do is extremely tiring. 
Tula, like I'm telling you, number in a, at least in a, in my own way. And P1 has made it very clear. P1's team, uh, not to, he didn't say this to me directly, but the, the the people in charge of the media team, we were told, do your thing your way. Someone from the media, the head of the media team, said, "Mwewa, the way you vlog, just do it." We are not going to restrict you or confine you to a certain format. You do it the way you like. Do it the way you do it. ZNBC, do it the way you do it. Kalemba, do it the way you do it. Mwebantu, do it the way you do it. They have given us the freedom to do our thing in our way in order to disseminate the information. That is the goal. So when you sit there and say, no, finish today, Lida. What are we leading? This is like, yes, there's a stipend. I'm not going to disagree. There is a stipend. There is a compensation component to it. Because what we do is we are literally, essentially, leaving our homes, leaving our work, leaving some of our businesses to come here to do the work of covering P1's activities. So that you can do what? So that you can see it from a different angle. Because I know there are some of you who say, no, well, we don't need you. There's an NBC there. We don't need you. There's the Harain Hirimans page there. We don't need you. There's the Zanis there. Well, there are certain people on my platform that will watch my content before they watch any other content, and vice versa. There are certain people that watch Muevantu's content before they watch my content. So, that's the name of the game. So, if you want to learn that to know, that's taxpayers' money. I'm a taxpayer. Did you know that? I probably pay more tax than you do. Did you know this? Did you know that? I bet you didn't know that, did you? Okay. Alrighty. Thought I'd share that with you. It's gonna be, we're gonna start at 10 o'clock today. Today's gonna be a long day. And um, I need to make sure that everything's charged. Do you have any questions? I don't usually take questions, but I'll do it today. Do you wanna ask me something? I've never done this before. I've never interacted, like asked you to, to ask questions. Someone says, today's National Day of Prayer. Yes, I know, I know, I know. And that's why we're here. We're here to cover the National Day of Prayer. That's why we're here. So relax, we're gonna be fine. William says, actually, we enjoy your content. Thank you, thank you, William. How much stipend are you getting? That's private, but we do get a stipend. You were just going to meet Kilomita in the court. Of course, if, if that case goes to court, when have I never gone to court? Huh? When have I never gone? When you are summoned, you go. And don't get it twisted. Miles has sent a letter of demand. It's not a court summons. It's just a letter of demand. Okay? But why are you, you streamed your hair? What do you mean? What's wrong? Something wrong with my hair now? Huh? Something wrong? Tell me. Why are you wearing that? Why are your glasses like that? If your is wrong, fiance. So if you feel, we just go with it the way it is. Do you love the way things are, HA Governor? Yes. I support this administration. I think they're on the right track. Great things are ahead. Do you believe in the National Day of Prayer? Yes, I do. I do I believe in a national day of I believe in a call to pray. A call to prayer. I believe in that. What I don't believe is building that edifice. Chiachi building, Chiachi calling it the house of prayer. So many people were involved in the construction of that thing. All the materials, money was donated. And let me tell you one thing that my ECL did that I must be, I must commend him for uh, because he did it from a point of view. No, let me change that. Let me, let me, let me rephrase that. That, that was wrong. Let me scratch that. Not the, the the word is not the word is not commend. That's the wrong word. I'll, I'll get it right in a moment. Let me uh, point out. Let me highlight, not commend. Let me highlight. Uh, one of the things that ECL did was um, there was see there was a board that was in charge of the construction of that uh, uh, that edifice, that uh, building, that house of prayer. But because Valungu could see that these chaps, they are stealing, not only are they stealing money, they are stealing materials, ECL dissolved that board. Because he said to those chaps, Imwe, this house of prayer is supposed to be constructed, but you are stealing the money. So, I'm just going to scrap it. So he scrapped it.
So I don't believe in that edifice being built because I believe that that thing is going to introduce a political religious cult. It will bring in some type of ecumenical movement. Ecumenical means, uh, you know, you bring the Baptists, the Lutherans, the, the Pentecostals, the Church of God in Christ, the Buddhists, the monks, the Muslims, bring them all together so that we can uh, hold hands and sing Kumbaya. That was the beginning of a political religious cult in terms of the structure of the building. I do believe, however, in the call, the, the, the call to prayer. Like, you know, pray, seek the face of God. You know, but I don't believe that we should relegate it to one day because in the PF, what they used to do was they'd pray Lelo, my Lord, you can say. You know, Saint Karimanshi would be at the chitene of prayer, my Lord, you can say. Avene, avene monga na avene mutila. They were at the National Day of Prayer, seeking forgiveness, reconciliation, and fasting. The next day, they were they were they were they were attacking people on the street. Nonsense. You know, it should be a lifestyle. It should not be relegated to a day. All right. Um, uh, one one last question, and then I'm going to. Why are Zambians so touchy? Miles is a public official. He shouldn't be this sensitive. All he needs is a state. Is is he is to state a position? Morning, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Mwandi. There are Zambians like me who feed into your free spirit. Watching from Wallington Ford, Connecticut. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.